We're going to be studying, uh, starting today in John, the seventh chapter. This is where Adam finished up the sixth chapter last week. And just give you a bit of my goal. My goal is to cover a chapter a week. Now, whether we reach that goal or not, is you know, that's, that's another thing. But my goal is to cover a chapter a week. That way we'll get through most of the, uh, the remainder of the book of John during this, uh, this quarter. So before we begin, let's, let's begin with a word of prayer. Our dear Holy Lord and God, we come before you. We want to offer our, our praise unto you. We want to submit ourselves to you as we now open the scriptures and we see the teaching of Jesus as John presents it. May we have our hearts open and willing to recognize you. These things we pray in Christ's name, amen. As Adam has mentioned before, John only picks a select group of events in Jesus' life to reveal to us. When we finished up with the, uh, the fifth and the sixth chapter, we had, his, had a trip to Jerusalem, and the trip to Jerusalem kind of... Uh, ended with, a, uh, with the Jews, with a, at least the rulers, antagonistic with Jesus. Because in John 5 and verse 18, it says, For therefore the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because he not only was breaking the Sabbath, but also calling God his own father, making himself equal to God. All of that started when he healed the lame man at the pool on the Sabbath day, and it escalated in the discussion that Jesus had with them where he, he recognized or he made the statement that, that God was his father, and so they recognized that not only was he breaking their tradition, but he was claiming equality to God, and so I called a great... Uh, tension between Jesus and the Pharisees. Jesus then goes back up to Galilee and it appears that he spends about six months there in, in ministry in Galilee and uh, he performs many notable miracles there. Well, amongst those, he, he feeds the 4,000. The Syrophoenician woman was healed. He went into the area of the Decapolis, which is, uh, is an area that's a lot of Gentiles were in, and he performed many miracles there. The transfiguration occurred during that time period, and Peter's great confession that he is the Christ, the Son of God, seems to have all appear, uh, occurred during that, that time period. And as we get to chapter 7, as he states in uh, verse 2 of chapter 7, there's going to be a, knee, or a trip to Jerusalem because the great feast in Jerusalem is about to occur. And so what we uh, uh, see in, in uh, chapter seven, we're going to see his brothers. See, this is an opportune time for Jesus. Jesus has been up here in Galilee and Decapolis, and he's been performing all these great miracles. They have the concept, yes, if Jesus is going to be the king, we've got to get him down to Jerusalem and let him do all the stuff down there that he's been doing here so we can start this revolution or whatever it is that, that the Messiah is going to do. And so that's, that's, to me, kind of the setting that starts us here in chapter 7. It's going to be the thing that uh, in this first conversation with his brothers. Uh, so let's... Let's read verses 1 through 9 of the uh, chapter 7. After these things, Jesus was walking in Galilee, for he was unwilling to walk in Judea because the Jews were seeking to kill him. And the feast of the Jews, the feast of booths, was near. Therefore the brothers said to him, or his brothers said to him, leave here and go to Judea so that your disciples also may see your works, which you are doing. For no one does anything in secret when he himself seeks to be known publicly. If you do these, these things, show yourself to the world. For not even his brothers were believing in him. So Jesus said to them, my time has not yet here. 
but your time is always opportune. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify of it that its deeds are evil. Go up to the feast yourselves. I do not go up to, the, to this feast because my time has not yet fully come. Having said these things to them, he stayed in Galilee. Well, as we, we see Jesus in, in Galilee because he was, was afraid to, uh, or he did not want to go up to uh, Jerusalem or to Judea. And I think the key to that is in verse eight. It, my time has not fully come. It was not time for him to go up and confront the leaders in Judea because when he did, he knew that that was going to culminate in the crucifixion. And so he chose, he was not going to go up that time. A couple of things I want to notice about what the, the brothers are saying to Jesus it, that uh, to me kind of indicates the, their, uh, their understanding. First of all, they're trying to instruct the Lord. Uh, their understanding of what, who he is and what he is about is like mine and yours. It's very minuscule compared to his, but they're trying to instruct him in what he should do based upon their concept of what, uh, uh, what he is, uh, he's here for. And it, I think the, to me, something that, uh, is, that we need to consider here, he says, for not even his brothers were believing in him. They, they saw he was up here in secret, as they said, in Galilee. And we know every, all the primary Jewish activities out of Jerusalem. So if you're going to be this Messiah, this revolutionary, we got to get you down to Jerusalem so you, you can do all these things, get this revolution started, or whatever it is that you come for. Uh, but they were not, I think this, they were not believing in him is, is to me, he exposes what that is in verse uh, uh, six and seven. He says, but Jesus said to them, my time is not yet here, but your time is always opportunity, opportune. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify it that its deeds are evil. I believe this section suggests that they were like us. They were very carnal in their thinking. They were looking for something physical and Jesus is completely spiritual. They had not made that transition. Of course, I'm not surprised because his, his very apostles had not made that transition at this time. They're always fighting back and forth about who's gonna be the greatest in the kingdom. So it seems that they are trying to manage Jesus get him to do what they see his purpose is, which is really a physical or a carnal purpose. And so uh, uh, another thing I think is important for us, Jesus, as with all other uh, occasions like this, will not be managed by the people around him. Jesus is focused on his purpose and he's gonna stick or stay with his purpose uh, in what he's going to do. Uh, yes. No, no the, these were his physical brothers, is the, is the idea. The ones that had grown up with him. Those are probably his physical brothers that they have left and gone now. They have left Galilee and gone to Jerusalem. Yeah, that seems to be the idea. So he tells his physical brothers and they're his physical brothers were trying to manage their expectations of him. And they seem to be carnal or physical expectations. And Jesus is not going to be managed by, by anyone. Other thoughts there. Because he's, he's got his purpose. His purpose is, to, is the spiritual purpose to die for the sins of the world. I don't think they were believing in his purpose. His purpose was to die for the sins of the world. They were looking for 
They were not looking for a spiritual purpose. They were looking for a physical purpose, a king to the, get rid of the rule of the, uh, and, and I, I base it on a part of, the, of Peter and the other apostles' reaction, even up to the night before the crucifixion. Peter draws the sword. He's ready to start a war. He's not ready to submit to the, uh, uh, the death of Jesus. And so I, I think they were not believing in his purpose, uh, seems to be. And so they were not believing in him as the son of God, the savior of the world, but rather they were looking for him to be the king of the physical world. And the thoughts on that? That seems to me to be the, the contrast there. Dempsey, you have a thought? Right. Right. Thank you, Dempsey. Notice Jesus says, the world cannot hate you because you're in line with the world. You're associated with their thinking. And so they would have, it seems that they would have been associated with the thinking of the leaders in Jerusalem, that the Messiah's got to come and we've got to run the Romans off. Seems to be the idea here. And Jesus was opposed to them because his message was about the spirituality and, and being God's people. That seems to be the contrast there. And he says, you're looking for something physical here. Right. And, and I, I think it's uh, in what was in line with what Dempsey's saying there. What he says, my time has not yet fully come, means we're progressing. And so what they're asking him to do, you go down to Jerusalem, you make a big show and get all these people to follow you. That's what they're asking him to do, right? Go down and do all these miracles, make the big show. Six months from now, he's going to do that. He's going to go down to Jerusalem the people are going to say, shout Hosanna. He's going to ride in on the donkey and declaring him to be God with him. It's not time to do that, I think, is what he's saying there. That will come. And that seems to be, uh, he's, he's not ready for that. Yes, Eddie? And this isn't the only time that he's had this sort of a negative interaction with his family. Right. Uh, Earlier in Galilee, when he had been teaching, and the Pharisees there were starting to avoid his teaching. And we're told that his mother and his brothers came to the house and were trying to call him out of the house. Uh, and, and somebody told him, Brother, his brothers are looking for you. And, and Jesus essentially said, They're not my family right now. My family are the ones who are listening to my words. And, uh, it's not that he disowned them, but he's saying, my work is more important than my than my family. They haven't got that yet. Okay, and so I, I think the uh, his the point of this section is they had not understood his purpose. They were not believing in his purpose, and so as a result, they were trying to accomplish their purpose with Jesus, and it, their purpose lined up more with the uh, scribes and the Pharisees than it did with Jesus. That seems to be his point here. Now, one other little thing I want to mention here before we go on. Uh, in verse 8, there's a 
a text read variously. He says, uh, go up to the feast yourself. I do not go up to this feast in the New American Standard Version. Some other versions translate that. Let me get my list out here. Uh, the New King James says, I, not yet, I am not yet going up to the feast. Uh, the modern English version says, I am not going up the feast yet. Uh, the net Bible says, I'm not going up to this feast. So we have kind of a variation in translation there and it's caused some people to attack that Jesus lied to his brothers because he, what, he didn't want to go with them. Well, from what research I have done on that, the, some of the oldest and best older manuscripts Jesus, it, it, it quotes Jesus saying, I am not yet going up to the feast. And that seems to be Jesus's purpose in what he's saying, because uh, he says, my, t my time has not yet fully come. I'm not going up to the feast in the manner that you want me to go. Going up there and, and making a big, big display and proclaiming that my kingdom has come. I'm not going up in that manner. That's what they were wanting him to do. He said, I'm not going up in that manner. And or perhaps that's one thing, or he's saying, I'm not going up yet because we see uh, either one of those would have. The other thing is uh, in verse 10, we see he did go up to the feast, but he went up privately. I want to contrast his going up privately on this trip versus his trip on the Passover six months from now. He's going to be very public about his entry into Jerusalem uh, at that time. And so uh, I think that all fits with his, in with his purpose. It's not time now to go up and, and make those declarations. And so he's going to go up privately to accomplish that. As a matter of fact, that's consistent with everything he's been doing for the last six months since he came back from Jerusalem. He has been in the remote areas teaching uh, his disciples and trying to lead others to Christ. Now, with that, let's, if you don't mind, let's, let's move on and uh, uh, to the next section here. Let's look at 10 through 13. But when his brothers had gone up to the feast, then he himself went up also, also not publicly, but as if in secret. So the Jews were seeking him at the feast and were saying, where is he? There was much grumbling among the crowds concerning him. Some were saying he is a good man. Others were saying, no, on the current contrary, he leads the people astray. Yet no one was speaking openly of him for fear of the Jews. In the rest of this chapter, I want us to note there are three groups of people that seem to be speaking. And so we, we have to pay attention, I think, to the groups of people that are speaking. The first group of people are, are the ones that he says here, so the Jews were seeking him. I believe the Jews refer to the combination of the, of the council or, uh, or the priest and the Pharisees. Uh, I, I base that on verse 32. Uh, verse 32 and verse 48. The Pharisees heard the crowd muttering these things about him, and the chief priest and the Pharisees sent officers to seize him. So the Jews were seeking to seize him. The group that sent the officers was the chief priest and the Pharisees. I think that's the group included in the Jews. Over in the 48th verse, they're called the rulers and Pharisees. And so that's one group when he seems to use the word Jews to refer to the, that group of people. The second group of people we hear, let's see here are the, there was much grumbling among the crowds. We have this, this is the Feast of the Tabernacles. The Feast of the Tabernacles was in the fall of the year and it was the largest feast that the that the 
they had in Jerusalem of, of the year. It was a combination of uh, two things. It was a combination of living in booths or tabernacles to remember when they were in the wilderness and they lived in booths or tabernacles. And it also, it had, it was a celebration, the feast of the fall harvest. So it was a, it was a great feast they had in, in Jerusalem.
Huh? The um, Thank you. 